Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Joana Marques. I'm from the Institute of Astrophysics and Space Sciences at the University of Coimbra in Portugal. And I will talk about planetarium communication topics. So astronomy education research has expanded in recent decades and planetarium is the most studied setting, despite informal settings in general being poorly studied still. Uh, in planetarium, there is still a predominance of quantitative research that is changing gradually, but studies analyzing what is in fact explored and discussed in the planetarium sessions are still rare. So we ask, what do people really talk inside the dome? Which topics? Is there a connection with the school syllabus? Is there a connection with the astronomy literacy goals? To find out, we recorded planetarium sessions in Portuguese institutions in different ones. We recorded video and audio these sessions with minimum disturbance. And so far we have 34 live sessions recorded. To do the analysis, uh, we did a full transcription of all the conversations that happened in these sessions, and we did a categorization by topics. What I'm going to show you here today, it's a brief highlight um, of our preliminary results that we have done with six of these planetarium sessions. So I will explore the astronomy topics, the connection with the school syllabus, and the connection with the astronomy literacy. Starting with the topics, um, analyzing these sessions, we see that both daytime and nighttime are simulated, that there is a predominance of positioning astronomy. Um, there is a lot of content related to solar system objects, and the focus is on observations and on the observable sky. The observable sky is used to communicate astronomy in a practical way, but also other media are used. For instance, image projection, or as we see in the image, this guide here in a planetarium session using a, a globe. Doing the analysis, we found out 14 topics, very varied about the visible sky, the conditions of observation, the dynamics of the sky, constellations, stars, the pole star, the sun, the moon, the earth, the solar system, and to a less extent, the universe, space exploration, telescopes, and the history of astronomy. But these are 14 umbrella topics that are subdivided in many others. And uh, we can see the richness of these planetary sessions by the almost 150 subtopics, ideas that are explored during these sessions. The four with um, greater expression with more subtopics, let's say, are the visible sky, the sky dynamics, the solar system, and the Earth-related topics. We can see that general topics seem transversal to different audiences and guides in our preliminary results. And uh, there is a predominant discussion done in a practical way of the characteristics of the Earth and the solar system and its consequences in the visible sky. But there are also other topics explored related, for instance, with preservation, and this is very contemporary, uh, topics like light pollution, the importance of observing and connecting with the sky, and the importance of preserving the earth and the environment are also present in the sessions. Uh, when we try to see which connections are there with the school curriculum, we use the essential learnings. So the essential learnings are uh, the, the goals uh, in the Portuguese school syllabus uh, for the different grades. And uh, uh, following the same tendency of the other OCD countries uh, curriculum, there are there is also astronomy present in the Portuguese curriculum. If you look at the panorama, it looks like it's very rich. There is astronomy in almost every grade. But when you look closely, it's just one essential learning, three, two. So it's not a lot. It's not enough for sure. Um, and in, in most of the cases, it's very superficial. The exception is the seventh grade, where you have 10 essential learnings because you have specific parts of the syllabus um, to astronomy. In total, there are only 22 essential learnings related to astronomy. 
when we connect these essential learnings of the school syllabus to our topics in the planetarium sessions, we see that there's a diversity of topics explored. The ones in light in the dark blue are the ones specific for astronomy, part of those 23 I talk in the uh, last slide. And the one with more expression, with the most expression, is the one that talks about the movement of the sun, earth, moon system and its consequences. In general, there are 37 essential learnings that are present. 50 are specific about astronomy, but on the other side, 30% of those 23 astronomy essential learnings are not present in our um, in the sessions that we studied. On the other side, there are 22 essential learnings from other subjects, from geography, history, among others. And so this shows some interdisciplinarity in the planetarium sessions that we studied. Moreover, 11% of the ideas discussed are not here in this graphic because they are not related to essential learnings. And this also shows a positive trend of the planetarium to go beyond the school syllabus, the school curriculum. And we think that's positive. Here is just to show you that, of course, the, the distribution of essential learnings is different for each session. And we see here one uh, from preschool and primary school children and another one with a group of adults. And you see that the distributions are different, but uh, we can also see that most of the ideas are about astronomy and are about the seven great astronomy in both sessions. And what are the connections with the literacy, astronomy literacy goals? Are there any? Is there a better fit to look at these sessions? To do that, to understand that, we use the framework of the big ideas in astronomy. I think I don't need to introduce it a lot here to this crowd, uh, but in general, it is a proposed definition of astronomy literacy, and it's divided, divided in 11 big ideas, um, subdivided in sub-ideas. Looking at our topics and connecting them to these big ideas, we see that it's there's a tendency for um, exploration of four of these ideas, much more than the others. They are the ideas one, two, three, and seven. So the idea one is about astronomy being one of the oldest sciences. The idea two is about uh, the astronomical phenomenon being uh, experienced and present in our daily lives. The third one is about the richness uh, and dynamic of the night sky, and another one about <clears throat> the planet Earth and the solar system. <clears throat> When we expand this to the sub-ideas, we see that the tendencies are more diverse. Uh, of course, there are clusters in the ideas one, two, three, and seven that are the ones with the, the most expression in our topics, but we see clearly that it's not uniform inside those ideas. So some sub-ideas have much more expression than others. So this should be further analyzed. On the other side, there are some vacuums, some deserts um, of ideas. There are some parts, some ideas, and some sub-ideas that are not explored in these planetary sessions. So we may ask, are some big ideas not suitable for planetarium education? Or can we propose planetarium sessions that go beyond the obvious topics? These are some of the questions that we can explore. But also, we know that the big ideas are not exhaustive. You know? And this analysis seems to show that maybe some sub-ideas uh, can be expanded because there are some content that is recurrently uh, communicated in the planetarium that it's not present in the big ideas. And maybe it should. We could reflect about it. And just to finish really quickly, uh, we can in general say that so far with our results, we see that these planetary sessions are very rich uh, and they have great demonstrative potential. This analysis can and should be expanded and refined. Uh, we notice that it's a core group of topics that seems to be transversal. Which topics are those? Are there differences in style with different guides in planetaria? Are there tendencies for different public? 
We also can explore the gaps, what is missing in these essential learnings and in these big ideas. Can, should these missing topics and ideas be introduced in the planetarium sessions? How can we use the planetarium better for different purposes? And last but not least, can this practical communication of astronomy in the planetarium help us identify and strengthen the relations between astronomy literacy and the formal curriculum? So we think that exploring the content that is uh, communicated in a planetarium, mapping that content and understanding the differences there are uh, may help us hopefully answer some of these questions. So it's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention.